All right. We're here. This is exciting. I I love talking Minecraft. I could talk Minecraft all day. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday. Hope everyone had an awesome weekend. Um, Mike Washburn, I'm here with uh, Steve Isaacs. Good morning, everybody. And uh, good morning to a lot of, I'm sorry, good morning to a lot of my seventh grade students who are jumping in already uh, as this is our first day in our distance learning program of actually using Minecraft Education Edition. So it's an exciting morning for us as well. We're gonna uh, we're gonna start like right at the start this morning, like super basic entry level. If you needed to know kind of how to get started in Minecraft, like like bare bones, this this is this is for you. Uh, if you've never played before, welcome. It's a rabbit hole. Hopefully you uh, hopefully you stick with us and. Um, and, and watch and play along uh, once we get started, uh, especially, um, you know, uh, Steve's students and, 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 you know, all of the teachers, hopefully, that are watching as well. Um, this is, this is going to be, hopefully, a lot of fun. We're streaming uh, from 9 until 10 Eastern time today, maybe a little bit longer because I could play Minecraft all day. Yeah. Um, and then, again, at 3 o'clock this afternoon until 4 um and it's going to be a blast so i'm going to get started with some like super basic introductory type stuff just to get everybody on the same page so what i've done uh I, i'm going to talk a little bit about the types of minecraft so there's actually like multiple versions of minecraft uh education or there's multiple versions of minecraft um, not just Education Edition. So the one I have open on my screen right now is Minecraft Education Edition. But the most popular version of Minecraft is probably these two right here. This is the Minecraft Java Edition. Uh, and this is Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Bedrock uh, or Windows 10 Edition is what other people sometimes call it. Um, the version that you see kind of universally across multiple platforms like PlayStation uh, PlayStation and Xbox and Switch uh, and all of that is is usually this one right here, this Bedrock Edition. So there are um, there's cross-platform play um, across Bedrock and and um, there's a marketplace so you can buy like different um, kind of add-ons and stuff like that. It's it's a really cool version. It's also the one that Microsoft generally is focusing on in terms of its um, updates and stuff like that. They, they usually um, are with an eye to updating Bedrock. But then there's this Java edition, which is the one that's been around forever. Um, Java edition's been around um, since the beginning, and it's the one... So when people talk about like modding in Minecraft, adding um, add-ons and stuff like that, um, they're almost oh they're, they're referring to doing this in the Java edition of Minecraft. Um, the other thing to remember is that both of these ones in particular are paid versions. You have to buy these, um, um, and you have to buy them separately as well. So if you buy Java, you don't get access to Bedrock uh, and vice versa. Um, so so these are two separate editions. So as you can see, I have all of the Minecraft. <laughs> all the Minecraft. So. And then again, there's Minecraft Education Edition. And and depending on um, where you go to school and where you or where you teach, you may already have Minecraft Education Edition available to you. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. I also have so there's Minecraft Pocket Edition, which is a, a bedrock version um, of Minecraft, and it's available on iOS uh, and Android. Um, and and is is played on your phone. I, I'm terrible at playing on. I, how are you at playing Minecraft with your thumbs, Steve? I hate it. Sorry, uh, but, <laughs> but but it's amazing to me to see how well kids play that way. In fact, I know, you know right. We've seen a huge shift. Um, like when we do the sessions at Mind Fair and things like that, we have to, which we're going to do this morning too. We kind of have to teach people how to play on the computer because yeah. they're so used to that. So. It's really just old folks like us that uh, don't adapt well to uh, playing games with just our thumbs. Totally, totally. Uh, just a reminder before we keep going, um, this is being streamed on Mr. Isaac's uh, Twitch channel. It's also being streamed on Twitch 
twitch.tv slash inside participate if you're following us along on the participate channel be sure to um smash that follow button for us it's because we got lots of cool content lots of cool stuff coming along um and there's there's lots of uh lots of cool stuff we're working on on this channel that you're gonna absolutely love i'm gonna dig into some content here online to get everyone um situated with with some of the things that are going on so you know one of the reasons well the main reason why we're streaming in the first place um so much and at nine o'clock in the morning on a monday is because you know the world is different a little bit right now and and we're all kind of at home and hanging out so why not play some minecraft right steve i couldn't agree more yeah so so one of the cool things that's happened is that minecraft education edition has actually opened up um the program to um to anyone who has an office 365 account so um now you know if you have a free office 365 education account you can you can fill out a form to verify it and get access but you can also just click on this link here this first check to see if your school account is eligible and if your school has a paid office 365 account you'll know and then and then you'll you'll be able to access it even at home so this is even students so Actually, students at home go can ahead I clarify one thing there so yeah. um office 365 is actually free yes so even if you just have if your school has office 365 you'll at the very least have your trial for education edition yeah and i think mike's going to get to it but then schools can also apply during this time to get free access to education edition um you know without it just being the trial through i think june so keep that in mind yeah that's right so uh steve is gonna we're gonna link this web page in the chat um for you to go to and bookmark and share with people um so that you can check out if you have access to it and, or get access to it and there's tons of interesting resources bid build challenges uh and different things on this this little web page that they've made uh to support people um here's the web page that you can go to again to try education edition to enter your email address to see if you have access to it and stuff like that so there's there's lots of content on the education edition site and they even created a remote learning with minecraft um kind of educator toolkit and this kind of gives you a primer on getting started similar stuff to kind of what we're talking about here a little bit um but also some kind of build challenge ideas some ideas on how to do some teaching and learning um with content links and stuff like that so pretty cool little um document here and we're gonna link that in the chat as well uh for you to download and and dig into and the last link i want to point out is something uh we were streaming all last week if you want to go back and look at these streams i think that they're all on mr isaac's youtube channel which he'll of course link in the chat as well um and then you can go to those youtube videos and and watch this this is the flipgrid minecraft covid 19 build challenge um and so this is talking about you know kind of i i mean i want to say it's kind of building some empathy and some some you know thoughts around what it's like to have to like live at home and live and work at home and uh, under kind of these kind of weird conditions and you can see that you can um you can build something uh following these challenges and you can respond and create a video on flipgrid um and get a hand and and get into it now there are there are six uh i believe challenges six challenges yep so far uh so you can go ahead and look at each of those and respond to them and they're pretty cool so i would um i would really suggest digging into those as a cool way of playing um playing minecraft yeah and in fact for my seventh graders who are watching these are the projects we're going to be doing during our distance learning time where each week um i believe it is we're going to have you submit one of these challenges um so you'll be able to get started on that even today. And, um, and it, it's really neat too, because we made it real simple with Flipgrid. 
where you can submit your uh, a short video that you can take with your phone or the screen capturing software and just yeah. upload right to the Flipgrid and they'll be, uh, a lot of them are being published and, and shared. Uh, just, you'll see some videos in there too. Just um, don't, it asks about doing a selfie at one point. If you do, just you know, cover your face or something. We're trying to uh, maintain student privacy, so we won't publish publicly your video if it has like your face in it. So there's just some keep really that good. On. There's some really good examples actually on the on the submissions of how to do that. So using yeah. a, an emoji uh, to cover it, like so. Obviously, Mrs. S is an adult, and that's fine. But you can take screenshots of your game and post them or of your Minecraft character and post them or just take your face and cover it with an emoji and you're off to the races. These are really smart ways of keeping your privacy intact, um, especially when you're um, when you're underage. So that's that. Um, I think now is a really good time to actually get in a bit, Mr. Isaacs, to 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 playing a little bit. So why don't you, um, I'm going to share your screen and why don't you take us through how to, um, start a world and, and, and let's do a little bit of, let's do a little bit of playing. What do you think? I would love to play. <laughs> All right. Awesome. <laughs> so now I saw a little bit in the chat about Microsoft accounts and things. Yes. Mike mentioned this too, but you do need for education edition, you need to have an Office 365 account. Um, a lot of your schools might already have them. For my students, I sent uh, information on how you could log in because we created accounts for all of my seventh graders. So if you're one of my students, you should already be able to log in. So I would like you to try that um, as well. And in fact, why don't I go all the way back to that so we can see that set that process even. Like if I'm here. Um, so when, when you see this screen at first, you're gonna click on sign in. And you can't see my sign in screen now that I think of it, because that's not what I'm showing, but it asks for my um, email address, which is my school email address. And then it's gonna ask if I'm signing in with a work or school account, which I am, and I'm gonna use my password. And then I am logging in. And now, um, if I hit play, it brings me to this screen. Now, there's so much great stuff in here already. Like, if you go into the library, there's all sorts of neat stuff that you could explore, including lessons, how to play, and such. So, while you're at home, if you think about it too, um, when you want to kind of continue learning, you know, outside of our stream and things like that, there's so many resources here for you to, especially this how to play section. Uh, but we're going to go through the basics. Um, it, any worlds that I already have will be in here. Okay, but I'm going to create a new world right now. Um, and here we go. So I'm going to hit new. And we're going to, Mike, should we play a little survival just to even show the survival aspect, even though most of the projects won't require that per se? Sure. You know, you know, like, you, like know survival. survival's my, you know, survival is yeah. my jam. It's my jam too. Um, so anyway. So here's, I'm setting it up as survival. I'm making it easy. Um, the reason for that is if it's on peaceful, no aggressive mobs will spawn. Um, based on what you want, that's fine, you know, but easy, at least we'll have some mobs in here. Um, I'm gonna choose an infinite world. You could choose a completely flat world or an old world, which is a smaller world. Um, I like infinite because I like the terrain and all that. And I am gonna use a few tabs here and things like the show coordinates. I really like that because that shows the coordinates, the XYZ coordinates um, of where you're standing in the map at any time. Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm not sure I like the word cheats here because I think the commands and things are so valuable. Um, so I will keep that on. Yeah, um, it's a weird, it's a weird descriptor for something. Yeah, that, it doesn't really, it's not really cheating. No, not at all. Um, in, yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, it's a matter of, uh, I think it's it's increasing your opportunities for efficiency is what it should say. But anyway, always day I could turn on. I'm not going to do that now just so we can see the day night cycle. 
But when you're creating your worlds, a lot of times what you'll do is you might play it in creative and you could change this in game anyway, but you might make it creative and you might make it always day, especially when you're doing one of the challenges. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit play first. And this is gonna bring me into a world. And now, um, once I'm in here and my students, because you're on the same domain as me, if you want to try to join our world, it might or might not let you because that's where you get into some weird internet, um, you know, firewall issues and things, but you're welcome to join in if, if it does work for you. So I'm gonna hit escape and over here, see this cute little picture of a group of people ready to play together. That's where I can go to start hosting. Now, again, from home, in theory, you can do this and there, it's getting better and better and easier. Sometimes, depending on the settings on your firewall, it might give you issues. But when I hit start hosting, it's going to give me these four codes or these four pictures as the code. So Mike's going to try to join into my room with the into my game with this Steve sign book and quill map as the code. And if you're one of my students and you want to give it a try, by all means. We'll so it would Steve sign. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, book and Quill. Book and Quill map. Yes. And I'm, uh, so uh, on my screen, you can see, is this the world you are trying to join? Uh, and you can see that it, so it's already seeing that this is the world he's built. And when I hit yes, it says connecting to multiplayer game. Uh, you know, and this is where <laughs> we test, believe it or not, we tested this because we're professionals before we came on the stream. Trained, trained professionals trained professionals and it still doesn't always work as you can see, see right which now. is which is so funny and we talked about this earlier too we did in fact test it um <laughs> and then when when we were talking about setting up the multiplayer i said yeah but just be be aware it, it still might not work um sometimes, sometimes though, flaky. yeah and what you might want to try after this one mic is to go out and go back in and log back in because we have seen that to often help but um We'll give that one try, and if not, uh, we'll. Why don't you anyway. Why don't you go ahead and start playing, showing I people will. how to play, and okay. then I will I will try to log back in and join you all. Okay, and yeah, there's the code for anybody again in class that also wants to try. So here I am. So now here's we were talking before too about how when it comes to um, Minecraft uh, on the computer, for some people who don't play on the computer much, this is a little bit of a learning thing. Education Edition, which is what we're using right now, happens to be available on the iPad, not the iPhone, but the iPad. Um, and I'm not sure about other devices, uh, but I mean, I mean, I am. It's Mac, PC, and iPad, I think, are the only three. Um, you want the code again, Knight? I got it. I know, but this is but one of the people in the thing. Yes, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paste it. It was Steve sign book and quill map yes and let's see here i have to tend to something in the well we'll see what happens there okay so now um sorry one second okay there we go um, so we're back here. Okay. So now did you get in Mike or no? I'm working on it. All right. So when I, um, when I'm here to move around, first off, the mouse serves as like your eyes. So I'm moving the mouse around left, right. I'm looking left, right. I push the mouse forward. I'm looking up in the sky. Just don't look at the sun. I'm looking down, etc. Now movement, like all the cool computer game players out there would be using the W, A, S, and D keys. <laughs> so W is forward, S is back, A and D strafe left and right. Okay. Um, there we go. So that's how that goes. And oh, G Ronder joined. So that worked. Okay, good. Welcome. And now here we go. There he is. Okay. So now that's the very basics about moving. And actually, spacebar is jump. And do you see how on my screen, one of the nice things they added in Education Edition is this ability to have these little cheats on the left for the uh, for the movement. But um, if I double tap the space bar, oh no, I can't because I'm in, in survival right now, which is fine. Um, e is for inventory, or we like to call it the everything-tory. 
Whoa. All right, now I'm gonna start with my left mouse button is how I start breaking things or blocks, breaking blocks. So right now I'm just having some fun collecting some wood. One of the reasons I, and I think Mike also like um, survival is I kind of like the, the resource gathering aspect of games where you have to gather all the resources you're gonna want to use in the game and crafting and all that. So I'm just collecting some wood right now, as you might see with my hand, it kind of hurts. My bare hand is chopping trees rather more effectively than one would think. You have an incredibly strong hand. I, I do probably because I've been, you know, because working out, you've been working out. Yeah, I have. And I've been chopping a lot of trees. Oh, look, Rachel, that's my, uh, that's, that's my, my, my colleague, uh, and partner in crime, Rachel. Uh, hello, Rachel. And that's the other teacher of a bunch of these seventh graders. So anyway, so there we go. Now I'm going to go to my inventory so that I can do a little bit of what's called crafting. Now, remember, for a lot of these projects, you can do them in creative mode. So you don't necessarily have to do this part, but it's definitely worth understanding because it's, it's what the game was kind of founded on. So I'm going to put my birch log in this, in this uh, compartment of my inventory. And see what it does is it will allow me to, um, to I guess, process or ch this wood into wood planks. So now I could either click and keep dragging these down, or if I hit shift click, it'll grab all of them at one time. And now I'm going to do the same thing with these oak logs. And there we go. So now I have a bunch of, of wood that I could use to build or what have you. Now I'm going to, going to take it a bit further. And actually there's even a little, they, they, they made things a little easier here too. See on the left here where it shows the things that are white here that are not red are things that I already have the right materials to craft if I want to. So if I just click on crafting table, what it did was it, it put in the recipe here for these four wood planks to make a crafting table. Now I do not need like five crafting tables. So I'm only going to use one for now. Now this is where it gets really interesting with crafting in the game. So I'm going to, uh, so we talked about left click for breaking blocks, right? Right click is to place a block. So I just placed my, um, <clears throat> my, crafting table down there and I'm going to right click on it. And now I'm going to do some more uh, processing, so to speak. And I'm going to, or crafting, I'm going to make some sticks out of these birch wood planks. So let's say I want about, we'll start with 24 sticks. Now see how my crafting table now has a three by three grid where the one in my inventory was a two by two. It's like, it lets you do simple crafting without a crafting table, but that's just what can be done in a two by two. The three by three is where most of the crafting takes place. So I'm gonna take my sticks. Now, a little trick here too is there are 24 here. If I want to split them up, if I right click on this, it'll split it in half and let me put the other half somewhere. So now I have sticks here and sticks here. Now I know that I want a, at least one ax so it'll make chopping trees easier. So I'm gonna actually, by putting two in here, I can at least get easily two axes, okay? Now, while we're at it, we might as well make a few other tools. So I'm gonna put, make this configuration. And what you notice too is, see how this is a pickaxe? And in a sense, where possible, the crafting looks like what you're crafting, okay? Now, again, what I said before also is anything that I can craft easily or have enough materials to craft show up here as well. So I can also craft a wooden sword, which will help me against those baddies. I can um, craft a shovel and I can craft, you know, all these other little tools and things. I could craft some signs, some all, all this stuff I can craft right now. I could craft a boat if we want to go for a little boat ride. So. There we go. Now, here's the next thing that's important to know. See how I have all that stuff in my hot bar at the bottom? Um, so I can either use the mouse wheel to scroll through those or the numbers on the keyboard, go one, two, three, four, five, and scroll through them, okay? So I'm gonna take my ax here and watch it'll be a lot easier to chop trees now that I have an ax. 
and my hand is no longer hurting. And there you have it. And we're, Upgrade. Yeah, and wait till we get, gosh, even better stuff too. And then the other neat thing is as you chop a tree down, the what will start happening is the saplings will start falling um, and those will allow you to farm and create, you know, more trees. So um, it can we don't be environmentally get, friendly. Exactly. We can sort of combat deforestation by uh, being tree farmers. And and then there are other. You, you could. I mean, the farming aspects become quite. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities there. So there you have that part, right? Now let's. Um, because another, oh, look at the, the sun is setting. It's a lovely day here in our uh -oh. little Minecraft world. You're in survival. Uh, you better. Um... I know. Should we uh, should we dig or should we cheat and put it in day? <laughs> so I'm going to use my pickaxe here. And we're going to start mining a little bit. But we're also going to do that so that we can sort of find a little um, semi. It's the, uh, like, building a house is a better way to protect yourself. But it's getting late here. So we're going to go in here and we're going to. Um, Kind of, we're gonna hide, yeah. But look, now I'm finding cobblestone, which is very good right now because I'm gonna need some torches and things. So we're gonna have to be able to do a little more. And do I have, yeah, so I have, all right. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to hopefully quickly enough, get us a furnace and it's getting a little scary everybody, isn't it? We're going to make some torches as soon as we can. Let's see what we got. How uh, about how about while you're um, while you're doing uh, some playing in survival, I'm going to flip to my screen because uh -huh. I can't play with you, and I'm going to show them. Uh, let's show them creative mode now. So let me show them, uh, let me show them how to build a creative mode world. Uh, so if you take a look here now, we're back at the. Um, the game building screen and you can see that instead of the default game mode being survival I'm changing the default game mode to be creative and the only other thing I really want to change now so creative mode as you'll see in a minute has some um, some really neat different kind of aspects to it the the most um, noticeable one being that you have access to every block and item instantly. You do not have to like mine or dig or anything like that to get access to blocks. Um, and so this is a space where you can now um, create almost anything you want. And it's also a space that is typically um, just related to doing um, kind of interesting building. Um, it's also the space, if you're a teacher and a student, the, the space you will spend probably the most time in um, most um, education kind of building and working is done in 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 Minecraft um, in creative mode so with that being said I do want to point out this uh, this um, slider right here this always day slider um, I I love I love this slider uh, it's really hard to build in the dark um, surprisingly <laughs> um, so so by clicking always day on, you actually have um, uh, the day night cycle is canceled because there is a day, as you saw in, in Mr. Isaac's world, there's a day night cycle and you can go into night and then it makes it really hard to kind of do anything. So as a teacher, for example, I always used to hear, you know, Mr. Washburn, turn the day back on, turn the day back on. So, you know, this gets rid of that problem kind of right away. Um, the only other thing that I tend to do, I have a pretty good computer, so I turn the simulation distance up a little bit higher. Um, this is so that I can see further away. So I'm going to go ahead and just click play. Um, I've named the world, I've made it creative, and I've turned on always day. Um, if I show classroom settings, you can see one other um, kind of interesting feature uh, when you see these classroom settings is this perfect weather one of the other places uh, yes you can change it uh, chat uh, to always day later um, with text commands and um, I'm not I, I don't know if we're gonna get into a lot of text commands today but there's certainly tons of websites where you can um, where you can change a lot of these settings 
by entering a text command pretty easily. Um, it does take some time to learn kind of those those commands, but you can look them up pretty easily. I am going to change this to perfect weather because one of the other things is when it starts to rain, it gets cloudy. When it gets cloudy, it gets dark. And when it gets dark, you can't build very well, um, uh, especially when it's raining really heavily. So I'm changing it to perfect weather as well. And I find that, I find that perfect weather is pretty helpful. Um, if I didn't want you know, uh, creepers and all of that stuff in my creative world. I can turn that off. Um, you can turn this off if you don't want like TNT, for example. And uh, this will be an interesting one for teachers in particular. Uh, depending on your scenario, you may or may not want your students to be able to hit each other and cause damage. So uh, you can turn that off as well. Now, um, I will point out um, that not every situation um, that's appropriate for. For example, Steve, uh, Mr. Isaacs in his class, does a lot of game design. And in game design, you're making a game where there are winning and losing conditions. And some of those games are games where you're playing against other players in kind of multiplayer worlds. And in that situation, player damage is appropriate. Just because it's PvP doesn't mean it's bad, right? Right. And you know what? That brings up another good point, too, is that while we... What typically happens in when you're making games or things in Minecraft, uh, especially in my class, is that you would make it in creative mode and then have something either automatically change it in the game or you would manually change it for the player. So um, there's a mode called adventure mode also, which like a lot of kids will create, like, let's say, an adventure type game. And when people are playing it, adventure mode allows them to play in the game it doesn't allow them to break blocks or build so that might be something you want or you could like Mike said uh, change it to survival mode once people are playing but it's kind of yes. neat to know that you can build 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 really quickly and efficiently in creative mode and then change it when you need to perfect so I'm gonna go ahead I've turned off player damage turned off mods I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and when I go ahead and hit play it creates a world it's still going to have all of the kind of the hills and the mountains and the valleys and the trees and all that stuff. But you'll see in a second that it's going to be a world where I can do some different interesting things. So um, you'll the first thing you'll notice, the difference between Mr. Isaac's world and mine, is that I, I don't have a health bar or a food bar. Um, and when I press the space bar really quick twice, you'll see I can fly up in the air anywhere I want and fly and travel all around the world. And when I land back down on the ground, when I click on a block, you'll see that I'm breaking blocks instantly, even trees. So if I fly over to this tree, for example, and I click on these items, this tree, you can see that Mr. Isaacs was taking a long time to break these tree blocks and I can break them instantly so it means that i can do i can for example i can clear land super quick especially once you figure out kind of this takes a little bit of practice obviously um mr isaacs and i have been playing minecraft for the better part of you know eight or nine or geez, a long time uh but so it takes practice you can hold your mouse button down so i am i'm left am i left clicking i'm left clicking and I can pull down that left click and just kind of move my target and I can break all of these blocks super quick, okay? So I've created a, a flat space. I'm gonna build a super quick house. So when I hit E, what did you call the E button? The everything, everything Tory. Everything Tory. So in, in education mode, uh, or sorry, not in education mode, in um, in creative mode, it truly is everything Tory. So you can see that I now have access to every single block in the game, every single item. You can see there are potions in it. There are all of the kind of the interactable blocks that are um, typically used in like survival mode, the crafting tables and stuff like that, the musical discs. Um, different types of buckets, um, and also some interesting kind of education-only stuff that we're not going to necessarily get into today, but the periodic table of elements, uh, all of the enchanting books, all of the minecarts, all of the 
uh, the firework rockets and everything. And including, I will scroll up to the eggs. So these are all of the spawn eggs. When you click on a spawn egg and then you throw it down on the ground, you create a chicken. Where did the chicken go? Did I kill it? Oh, I'm killing it super quick, Steve. I don't know why, why that's happened. He dies. They're dying right away. The chickens are dying. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. That doesn't matter. Well, it matters because we care about chickens. But, um, and I can also search. So if I want to, um, for example, replace those, gla those grass blocks that I lost, I can find the grass block and I can put it in there. I'm also going to pull out um, some oak logs and I'm going to pull out some stone. And you can see when I search stone, it comes up with everything that the word stone was related to including things where the word stone was just in it, but it wasn't the actual word, like redstone. Um, so you can see redstone, block of redstone, redstone ore. But I want to pull out, let's say, I want to pull out these stone bricks because those are pretty nice. And let me pull out the stone stairs. Uh, and let me pull out cobblestone, some cobblestone stuff. I'm going to show you some some kind of fancy, some fanciness while we're, Answer. while we're doing this uh let's do some mossy cobblestone and let's do some cracked stone bricks okay i feel pretty good about this i'm gonna actually grab some more oak stuff let's grab the oak wood planks let's get rid of the chickens as well um, mike so is uh, by the way mike is uh sort of my mentor when it comes to building and building strategies and kind of what's so neat about this game is that as you start playing around more and more you start realizing interesting ways to get better effects out of how you're building and that becomes a, an art form of its own for sure so thank you by the way <laughs> nice you're uh i i i've i've taken to to learning how to build nice things and um it's it's been fun to to express kind of creativity and art in uh, a way that's that's different I, I i used to always talk about not being necessarily a good drawer and i'm not a good drawer um but for some reason i seem to be not too bad at building things in minecraft so um i'm building as you can see here i've got four walls i've got a door um maybe i want to to crack some of these blocks here we'll put some windows in here later and i'm not going to go crazy on like normally i would build as mr isaacs would tell you i would build kind of like a, a cascading sort of roof um that uh that using using some different bricks and maybe once uh once we get back to steve and uh, mr isaacs and see what he's been building we um I'll, I'll i'll do some some work on this while he's talking and uh and and show you some different tricks but here is a super basic little house um using a couple different things and if you want to kind of like really quickly step it up a bit you could for example crack some of these bricks and put down some different styles of bricks instead to give it sort of kind of a a, a different texture in a couple different places and then you have um maybe even i could take the first three blocks here uh let's put the grass back and let me go like this so i have like kind of a mossy stone entrance i'll put a door and windows on it a little bit later let me flip back to you mr isaac uh, see how you're doing over there all right Actually, let me take a look at the chat quickly. I'm not sure if there's any questions that we've been we've been missing. Some questions about the code, which I think we've settled. Um, uh, science streams, welcome to the to the stream. Yes, there is some really awesome science content that you can cover. Hey, Mark. Yeah. Did you play Civ Five last night? <laughs> I sure did. How'd that uh, go? I, I, I may or may not have absolutely crushed science streams in Civ 5 last night. <laughs> um, and if anyone wants to play me and thinks they got Civ 5 game, um, please bring it um, because um, I, I love Civ 5. I have 
two thousand hours in it, wow. and uh, and and uh, it's it's kind of my jam. So I, I'd be happy to play Civ Five with anybody. Let me switch over to your screen and see how sure. you're doing. And I'm gonna I'm gonna step up my uh, my house a little bit, and when we come back, you'll see some more stuff. So. One of the interesting things too about, especially like in a survival world or, or actually in any world, let's say, um, the, you know, people start to find that they have different interests and different skills um, in Minecraft. I find personally when I'm playing survival, I think I think I find it somewhat maybe meditative that I love to, um, you know, kind of gather and 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 collect resources. Um, so depending on where I am, oftentimes you'll find me either um, farming trees and replanting them or, or gathering resources to hand off to somebody like Mike, who will then use them to build. Um, so here I'm still digging. Now, the if you notice on my screen, it shows the coordinates. So I'm at 4106.56.1. That's the X, Y, and Z. The Y is how far down I am. Now, when it comes to survival and trying to get valuable um, ore or resources, there are certain levels where a lot of them exist. So I tend to try to dig dig down, and if you notice, I'm kind of making a stairway down. I'm trying to get down to about um, on the Y, right now I'm at 55. I'm trying to get to that 10 to 20 range because that's where I'll start finding things like diamonds and such. So for me, there's like a fun adventure um, quality to the game where I'm like, ooh, you know, I'm, right now I'm getting all this cobblestone. I can't wait to find, you know, some other resources or see what I find underneath. Sometimes I'll find sort of an abandoned mine shaft or what have you. Um, so here's what I've been doing. I've just been building, you know, kind of finishing this mine. And there it just goes up to there. Um, but we can keep going. If anybody wants to come down and, and help me uh, build this quicker by all means. We have a few people in the world with me. Um, but that's what I'm doing right now. And and now I'll show you also, um, I forget if I, let's see, I'm going to go back up to where my, um, I think I might have showed, but I'm going to show you how to smelt some resources. Oh, there's William M. Hello, William M. And G Runger. They're, they are, they're coming to the call. Um, they're answering my call. So, oops. So here's a, this is, this happens to be a, um, I placed this silly uh, crafting table up there. But what I want to do is I want to create, build a furnace. In fact, I'll probably build two of them right now. But that also reminds me that, oh, okay, here we go. So now I've got these two, are they fern eye if I have two of them? Who knows? <laughs> kind of being a little silly. Um, let's see, I think I'm gonna call them Ferni. So I've got my Ferni, and I'm gonna place them here just for now. Now, I'm gonna use some coal here, and I found some iron, so I want to smelt the iron. And I'm actually gonna, since I have two of these here, I'm gonna split it up so it's more efficient. So I'm gonna smelt some iron here as well. So basically what this is doing, a furnace, you can burn, you can use either um, wood planks as kindling for coal, um, and what I'm doing is I'm smelting iron into iron ingot, and this is what I can use to craft some things. So interestingly, if you're in survival, when you get down um, further and you want to like mine diamond, if I don't use an iron, like if I still use my stone or wood uh, pickaxe, I'm going to actually break the diamond and it will not be usable, which is a crying shame. Um, whereas if I have now a, an iron uh, pickaxe, then I can, in fact, uh, you know, mine other resources. So that's kind of how the game works, too, is that you have certain things that I can only, I need certain tools to use. And I'm going to get, while I'm at it, two iron pickaxes, but I'm going to save them kind of for later because they're going to become more important um, when I get valuable ores. Um, <laughs> Baloney already has full iron and four diamonds. Are you in our world, Baloney? Are you maybe William or Deeronder? Let's see. All right. So now, you know, actually, what I should also do, Mike, um, is I'm going to take a little step away from this because what I really want to show 
is, and I'm going to go into actually creative mode for this um, for a little bit, at least for myself. Oh, look, we've got people building houses up here and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show some of the specific um, uh, the, the features that are specific to education edition, OK? Now, um, if I go, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go uh, game mode, creative. And I'm just going to say for self for now, I'm going to leave everybody else in survival for the moment. <laughs> so now there are some interesting things. These are in the education edition, but not in other versions. So the camera is pretty, I think Mike would say rad. And the portfolio. <laughs> it is rad. Also rad. Um, so the camera allows me to, let's take a picture of the house in progress. Uh-oh, there are no photos by that because I have the wrong thing selected. Okay, camera. I'm going to look in the area, and I'm going to right click. There's a picture. Now, it gets even better when I do this. Watch. Ready for it? Wait for it. Wait for it. I'm going to now I place the camera down. I'm going to right click, say cheese. Hope I'm smiling. And there I am make, taking a selfie. Now here, I'll get a picture of D-Ronder. Okay. Now, so those are three pictures I took so far. And now I'm going to, this is my portfolio. So when I have my portfolio selected and I right click, it shows my portfolio. And I'll, I can give them captions. Okay, now I can export this portfolio, and I don't know how much of this you'll actually, you probably won't see this exactly, but what it does is it creates a PDF file. Oh, you are saying that. So it creates a PDF of that. Now that PDF file will have um, all the pictures in it. And one of the nice things uh, and the reason for that the education team put the camera and portfolio in is for uh, assessment purposes and for schoolwork, it's a great tool to um, have kids submit their work as a portfolio with pictures showing and also the captions explaining what they did. So I often have students um, create something and then either, uh, then they would typically, like let's say it was a redstone creation even, they would take a number of pictures of it, they would give a caption for each to let us know what's happening there, or they might even include signs and things in the pictures to better explain it. So that's the camera and portfolio. The next things I want to show you are the slate, the poster, and the board. Ooh, there's a composter. I guess I should have known that, but that's so great. Layla, too bad Layla's not watching. She would love the composter. And um, so uh, what else? The board. So now. I want to show these in comparison to the sign, and I'll tell you why. So those people who have been playing for years, like Mike and I, in the past were kind of limited by using signs to say things. Um, OK, so there's a sign. It's all good. Welcome to D-Runder's house. OK, now the thing is, in in, you know, in, when you're making games and things in Minecraft, you really do want opportunities to um, have more text available, especially for the sake of narrative and things like this. So I'm going to kind of show you then the difference here. So this we've got the slate. Probably spelling that wrong. OK. Let's see, did I spell it right? Uh, I probably just keep spelling it wrong, no matter what I try. Do you render? OK, sorry, do you render? Um, but I can edit it. I think it was. Is that it? I think so. Let's see, because spelling counts. Do you render? OK, sorry about that. Let's go one more time. I just want to do you render? Dar. There we go. OK, so there we have it. So that's as a, a slate. Now a poster. OK, 
Okay, so see how much more I can put on a poster. And then let's see if this will even fit here. I can't even think of enough to write to fill that up. But see, that's so that's a board or a billboard. So when it comes to narrative or storytelling in Minecraft, these will help immensely. Okay, and again, um, from a you know an assessment standpoint too, like it's really like a lot of projects that kids will do in Minecraft will involve you know sort of building something and explaining it. Um, you know, like let's say you're rebuilding the pyramids in Egypt. And you want to give, um, you know, so a nice description of, of the pyramid or the history of it or what have you. Now, here's my favoriteest, favoriteest, favoriteest thing in Minecraft Education Edition. You know what it is, Mike? Okay. What's that? Favoriteest. Say again? Your favoriteest. Favoriteest. Yeah, do you know what it is? No, oh, tell me. Oh, come on, guess. My favoriteest <sighs> thing in Minecraft Education Edition. I don't know. But I want you to tell me. I'm excited to learn. The oh, NPC, NPCs. Oh, I can see it now. I wasn't looking at your screen. I'm yeah. so enraptured by my building that that I <laughs> I wasn't even looking at the streaming actual screen at all. No, that's okay. But the, uh, the I mean, I, I love, love NPCs. NPCs. I love NPCs. So yeah, yeah, yeah. the NPCs provide a lot of, oh, and look at this. I'm trying to place an NPC. I can't place the NPC. Mike, why can't I place the NPC? Because you don't, I know why. Why, why, don't, you, why don't you explain I'll it? I'll explain it. Okay. So <laughs> in Education Edition, there is something called World Builder. So slash WB toggles World Builder true or false. So now I just made it true. So certain things, and I, it's funny, is I actually thought at one point maybe the boards and stuff needed it, but I guess not. Um, but the NPC to place one, I have to be in World Builder mode. I can guarantee that even a lot of the students that are watching right now, even though I clearly stated that you have to be in world builder mode, they will on their own after we leave the stream, start working in education edition and they will wonder and be frustrated when they realize they can't place an NPC. And they will even go as far as to ask me in our Google classroom why they can't place an NPC. And I will remind them about world builder. I've, uh, it's not my first rodeo. So. No. <laughs> so here's my NPC. So it's going to be, how about this, Mr. Isaacs. And I can change the appearance of the NPC. Um, oh, I think I, that's kind of what I look like, right, Mike? Um, yeah, and, it's great. Yeah, I'm going to go with that guy. And so I can edit the dialogue. So I can say, um, welcome to the uh, Minecraft COVID 19 build challenge. This is our dream quarantine. That rhymes, dream quarantine space. Sounds like a band name. Yeah. Ooh, I think there will be a lot of band names that come out of it. I, I, you know, maybe we should start registering the band name COVID or something. Uh, this oh, is our boy. dream quarantine space. We hope you enjoy the tour. Okay. So let's say I would have the NPC give me a tour. Now, maybe what I want to do with this NPC is, well, I'll first start with that so you can see it. Now, if I right click on it, I can still edit it. But wait a minute, I don't want to edit it. I want to test it. Any idea what I could do? So I can test it. I should go back and turn World Builder off. So now it's false. So now I test it and welcome to the Minecraft COVID COVID-19 challenge, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so there we go. So now I wanna actually add some interesting elements that are possible with this. So let's say I wanna to go to advanced settings. I have a couple of options here. I can add commands, which are really why NPCs are my favoriteest because um, if you're familiar with commands or command blocks, with command blocks, you can typically only do one command at a time per block with the NPC, you could do multiple commands, like almost like coding line by line. And it's kind of funny how things work in education. I had about maybe by now it's two years ago, a student asked me, oh, can we put in, you know, more than one command? 
And I laughed. I said, ha, 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 no, you can't do that. Because my context was like with, um, with, uh, with command blocks and you could not. But then I said, wait a minute, why don't you try it? So the student went ahead and did some things like give um, at player uh, diamond leggings give, and you don't actually need the slash either in a, in a command here, at p diamond chest plate give at p diamond sword, and for good measure, let's summon a chicken. Because everybody loves a chicken. Um, so these are four commands. Now with command blocks, these would have had to be four separate command blocks. But because my student was, um, you know, thinking what they would like and, and magically it worked, they were able to do this. So now when I go back, I'm, I'm going to clear my inventory for a second, although I really don't know if I want to do that. Yeah, I'll do it. Clear. So I just cleared my inventory. Now I talk to Mr. Isaacs and welcome to the Minecraft, blah, blah, blah. And now look, I just was given three things and Mr. Isaacs is kind of, um, right now the chicken is up, there he goes, he's almost inside. Now it's running around like a chicken should be able to do. Um, now, so that's that. The other thing, if I go back to World Builder, is I can go to event settings again and I can go to add URL. So here's a command, but here's an add a URL. Let's say we want people to be able to go to the um, Flipgrid challenge, flipgrid.com slash Minecraft COVID-19. And we want to, let's say we want to make this what we'll call button mode. So button name will say um, uh, build challenge website. If it look, we had that much. OK, now we go back and actually Sadly, you won't see this in action right now because you're viewing my Minecraft screen. But when I click this, it's taking me in another window to the website for the COVID challenge. So this would be a neat way for people to come in and then for the um, NPC to tell them where they can go. Now, my students, one of the big projects they often do is um, something called uh, Fairy Tales Reimagined, where they retell a fairy tale, folktale, or fable in Minecraft and create a game slash digital story um, in order to, to do this. So NPCs become incredibly helpful in telling the story. So you might, might run into NPCs at different places in the game. The NPCs, uh, I can find my cursor. So the NPCs can even, um, in the commands, it's crazy. They can even, let's say add another command, the NPC could teleport the player somewhere else in the game. So let's say you let's say you ask a question. So the NPC says, you know, uh, like a, a, a question with maybe two answers or something like that, two possible answers or, or what have you. Um, if you get it right or something, maybe it teleports you to the correct next spot. And if it's wrong, it teleports you up in the air and you fall into a big lava pit and, you know, and then have to try again, that kind of thing. So um, now you kind of see, I think, why NPCs are my favoritist. So believe it or not, it's 10 o'clock. Oh, boy. <laughs> so what I would like to do, I'm going to share uh, my screen and show you uh, what I did while Steve was talking. And, and then we'll sign off for the day. But we'll remind you that we're back again at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Um, be sure, folks, to, to follow um, the various streams. Uh, turn those notifications on so that you get uh, a reminder when we start streaming uh, so you don't miss it. And we may even kind of um, uh, we'll repeat some of this again uh, and then carry on where we left off maybe. Uh, or I think we're, we made... Uh, I'm not sure. We're not sure what we're going to do yet, but we're going to keep playing Minecraft later this afternoon. So let's let's see how far I got here um, in my in my um, my little build. So what I did was I changed the roof of the house to. I used uh, the stairs in a kind of a creative way to make it look like a roof. I added uh, some flowers on the outside, and I used these are actually trapdoors that look pretty good. 
Uh, I used uh, a plank with a, a stair to make it look like a table. Um, you can see uh, that I added some carpet on the floor and uh, wood planks on the floor. And you can see that this is like one of my favorite tricks uh, that I just showed Mr. Isaacs uh, last week or a couple weeks ago is how to make a really cool looking chimney. Uh, this is a bit of a weird hack, but what you can do is actually put a campfire inside of a, in, in, in surround it by, so, so you can see these are trap doors. So if you, if you, whoop, that's a barrel. If you uh, grab a trap door and you want the kind of the ones that kind of cover it up completely. So the spruce trap doors or the dark oak trap doors are kind of best. So if you take the dark oak trap doors and you place them and then you lift them up. Uh, when you back away from it, you can see that it's uh, now it's a pretty cool looking chimney. We might, we might need to uh, write a blog post like 101 things you could do with trap doors because they've been right. sort of favorite, favorite it, building material. Yeah, trap doors are pretty awesome. Um, so and then what I did was I built a, a little dock down here. So I, I have a pathway um, with a dock. I've got um, some some uh, if you take the fences and you just place them in one piece like this, they actually become little posts that stick up, which are kind of cool. Uh, you know I, placed a boat. I did. I used that trick uh, with my nephew just yesterday because we wanted to make a, a dining room table and yeah. the posts from the fences made for great legs for the table. So and they also make uh awesome what's the what's the light called i thought it was called a lantern there is a lantern oh uh, I, was, I was just spelling it wrong uh so they also make watch this mm -hmm. this is like one of my new fun things too if you take these like this uh let's do and then put one here like this and then take a lantern and put it underneath so uh, you got a you got a pretty neat little light post um so i have a, a lantern outside i took a fence way and the other the last thing we'll leave you with that's really fun for building like in a nice kind of creative way is again breaking up the blocks and putting a very different style uh, varied style of blocks that all kind of relate but aren't exactly the same um in here so that it looks like it's got some texture to it so i actually have some um stone um pressure plates which actually, you know, when you have the volume on it, they actually make a kind of a noise when you run over them, which is kind of funny. Um, but, you know, when you're ignoring the fact that they make kind of a pressure plate noise, um, they actually look really cool um, in this walkway um, with the other types of blocks. So it's a, a little bit more varied. And then I took some barrels and I put some barrels down here mm -hmm. at the bottom that look like it's got like a bit of a storage solution down there for, um, you know, what our fisherman was doing. I'm having trouble spawning NPCs. I wonder why. Spawning, spawning like I, I tried to put some cows in my little, in my little cow thing here. I, I, I made a pen, um, but you know, I'm, what's that all about? Whoa, that's weird. So, We'll leave you. We'll leave you with that weirdness. <laughs> but, uh, but I do want to say to remember to go to the Flipgrid Challenge um, website because we have six unique challenges. Um, one is building your quarantine dream home. Um, so think big for that. Um, the, another one is actually, which is really interesting, is building a model of the COVID virus. Um, so check that out. It's really kind of interesting. Like the virus itself is rather beautiful, um, despite it's uh, not being so beautiful. Um, the another one is uh, building an escape room, or a you know sort of a take on the escape room. One is building a Rube Goldberg machine to help you uh, with something in these challenging times. One is building a um, innovative medical facility and I'm probably missing one, but you get the idea. So please check them out because they're interesting challenges. They're even prizes. Um, HyperX and NASEP have supported us with each challenge. We'll have, uh, you know, one t one school or class that will 
win uh, 10 HyperX headsets uh, based on the entries. And that'll actually be done somewhat randomly. So if you complete one and it meets the criteria, you'll be entered into a drawing, okay? Awesome. Well, thanks for thanks for following Brad. Thanks for following Miss Lee. Thanks for watching everybody. Uh, be sure to uh, to join us again later this afternoon. We'll uh, we'll play some more Minecraft. This has been um, quite a bit of fun. I I can play Minecraft all day, as you can see. Um, so thanks for joining us, everybody, and we'll we'll see you a little bit later. Thanks. Bye, everybody.